POG is a better standard team. You're not going to magically get better at standard play in one game. You've been scrimming for it for two weeks. You yeah, have to yeah. do something different. This reminds me of a playoff game that a while, a while ago against TSM where we won the first game by a backdoor and they were like, hmm, we're actually much worse here. We're losing in every <laughs> aspect possible of the game. We're probably going to lose this set. And it doesn't really hit you that hard. When you lost, you're like, okay, they were clearly miles ahead of our play. So, yeah. I mean, while their faces are quite dismantled, I think that it won't hit them that hard. Their faces are distraught. Distraught, yeah. I think is the word. Jesus. <laughs> dismantled faces. All right, Lord, dual lane. Watching too much next to <laughs> Dual oh lane God. priority, guys. Uh, has been something that has been lacking in the draft phase. COG has picked superior matchups. First game they had Karma, last game they had Bard. Bard doesn't get banned. At least they take the Ash for Jint, a pretty strong laner. Yep. Do you think COG is going to power pick supports here, or do they just go in and uh, pick Gragas? Because that was taken away from them second rotation last game. Well, if I'm COG, you can just drive the coffin, and, or drive the nail in the coffin and go with something like the Thresh. Just go with Thresh mm -hmm. and just camp the bottom lane. And I know that Bard uh, Afra can play, but I think we're most likely going to look for another Bard pick here, just because it's so safe, it's so easy, and the, out the movements on the map Hover. seem like on so much of TL got thrown off guard by the magical journeys that if you just replicate yeah. that once again, they're not going to magically not be annoyed by them. Yeah, and one of the good things about subbing in Jinth is COG definitely is not prepared for this, and they have no idea <laughs> what the like champion it. pool yeah. is. I like this. All right. So, so yeah. Jinth in, in, in solo queue, he's really good at Ash and Sivir. Those are like his champions, and. I mean, he plays other stuff too, Jin, Lucian, all that stuff. But the things that he specializes on are Ash and Sivir. So they ban Sivir and they get Ash. So at least he's on a comfort pick, which I think will be one of the things that could play into TL's favor. Yeah, and as the jungler X Smithy, he has no reason to change what oh, his the, style um, would be the as Ram far as Gragas. The Ram support is Dude, probably going to be locked lane, in. Yeah, that's a TL special. Give him that lane priority, no problem. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's it's interesting. COG decided to lock in the Bard, and the jungle pick is going to be heavily influenced, as we've seen throughout the series, by the strength of the lanes. And basically, X Smithy has been able to win okay. by just forcing into his strong lane. So unless Team Liquid has an equally strong lane which, in which they could force into, I don't see how they stop X Smithy from just doing the same thing three games it, in a row. They're not. The picks are practically the same. You're not going to have priority in the bottom lane. CLG has counter pick on the on the AD carry. You pick the support that's going to be difficult to actually engage on. Only at level six do you actually have a lot of kill pressure onto the Bard here. Yeah. And if you just go with the likes of, say, maybe even Lucian here, how do you, or Lucian or Ezreal, how do you even do anything to, to CLG again? What we have to set up, though, is, is TL's last pick, counter pick uh, jungle. Like, yeah. how much are they uh, trying I'm, to set him what, up to what carry? What we take guesses here? I mean, everyone's hovering Rengar on, on the left side. They're so trolling I, him. Super I assume that, that we're going to see something something aggressive out, out of Jardok mm -hmm. here. I, 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 he doesn't I, don't want see, I don't see any situation where you save your last pick for your jungler if he's just going to pick a, a Rek'Sai again or yeah. an Elise. I feel like it has to be something special. I want to see... Hasics? Maybe? Nocturne. Just say, I'm done with the laning phase. <laughs> I'm doing this myself. Yeah. If if Kled was available, <laughs> I'd want to see Nocturne <laughs> well, and Kled. Be the ring it's not the world here. we're living in. Yeah, Matt's hovering it too. I mean, they also know they're up against an Ezreal. I kind of like that from Stixa as well, saying they're going to do some type of like jungle assassin cheese. I'm going to pick an Ezreal that not only can be strong in lane, uh, but can also duck out of there. I'd be so disappointed yeah, if they do Rek'Sai. Oh, and then no. he, again, you oh, go with the God. Ezreal, you still don't have any kill pressure onto the bottom lane because now it's Ezreal part. So once again, you get your bottom lane counterpick and the last, like, the last pick Rek'Sai. I mean, what world is this? This doesn't do anything for you. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're trying to decide where the junglers can go early game because the early games have been dictated actually by X Smithy in most of his locations. <laughs> I think he's got options everywhere here in this yeah. matchup. Mid lane, not so much pre six. You don't have quite enough damage unless Phoenix plays the lane extremely aggressive, but you have kill pressure on the top side. You have kill pressure bottom with Bard. Ezreal well has really nice follow up if somebody gets caught out of position since Bard, uh, Brahm, and Ash aren't quite mobile and Dardoch. Again, the same little tools for him, just go bottom or top. I'm still really disappointed that we didn't get to see a fun jungle yeah. pick. Yeah. This was our chance. They set it well, up. Let's assume that it's going to go to other games and we can see more hey, picks. Hey, could be. Jint can bring it out. The la every time Team Liquid subs are 80 carry, they win. Yep. This is the trend. 
Wow. So should they sub first Jin game after back if they win? Keep and going back and keep... forth. Dom yeah. will get a phone call. Apparently he's on the active I'll roster. Get on stage. Throw him in. <laughs> you got the experience. You're not gonna get hit. God with bless Auto Phil. <laughs> Turn into the jungle, Haiti carry stream. Yeah. If, if you were put in the situation, what would be your ID though? <laughs> Ezra. I'm Ezra, Ezra one yeah, trick. Okay. I can't play anything else. So. I'd go Sivir so I can just run away. No, I, don't, I, I can't play anything that's short range and, and no escape. I need to be able to get out of there because my positioning is, it's a jungle, yeah. it's a it's jungle question, positioning. Yeah. Jungle positioning. <laughs> yeah. It's, up, it's in, in the middle, in the mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two flashes. All right, so uh, I really like actually when we can get into split screen as well for these early jungle paths. No reason to really switch anything up. We've already seen X Smithy's Gragas against Dardox Rek'Sai. The lanes, What's funny is the lanes oh, still seem to so. favor COG, right? With the Bard versus the yeah. Braum, or is the Ezreal like a weak enough thing that maybe Jinth can Ezreal's get Ezreal's early game is really yeah. strong. It's like, mm -hmm. it's only once he gets the tier that he actually starts falling behind. And that's why you see a lot of Korean uh, Ezreals delay that tier purchase so long so they can keep that lane dominance for a while. We're gonna track X Smithy and Dardoch as much as possible early on here. COG, I think they were making sure it wasn't a lane swap. I think that's what they were trying to do right really? there. I think they might have been trying to predict that Matt was walking in there Maybe. and trying to get an early kill, but I think they, uh, Matt saw them on, on his way in. Is there yeah, a world I in think which you no, want I think if you go for the deeper wards, you do go, you like, the, those wards aren't going to predict you a lane swap if you really want to, so. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think still, once again, the junglers just start to the top side, and the path thing, I mean, I feel like Dardoch has to go for a cheese path here. You gotta try something. Clearly, it hasn't worked. And the last game, while it did look like TL was in command, I ultimately felt like a lot of it was dictated by CLG and just by their mistakes and overcommitting, especially in the red side top play where they lost two people. Had that not happened, mm -hmm. had Smithy not being able to be caught out with that silly play instead of basing and ulting, I think that CLG was in control of that game. I mean, I think the problem here is what cheese path do you go for? Because the three three camps in top. Probably won't work against against the Nar. You can't go mid really either, and your bot lane's gonna have uh, zero priority in the early game. Yeah. So he can't contest the red. So I I, I can't figure out what so cheese path would actually work. One of the cheese paths that happened that I've seen a lot, particularly from Rainover, is that you do doubles and then you go all the way to wool to the blue buff. You do doubles, blue buff, walls, then raptors back to the red buff, and then you mm -hmm. found yourself to the top side right as you finish the red buff. So mm -hmm. it gives you a lot of time as level two, but it ultimately finishes you in the top side and you're able to actually get a gank off of there, or just sneak into the top side and get a counter jungle onto the gromp and the wolves as they will spawn by the time you're there. So it's just a, a full on put your eggs in the lower low basket. So far the speed is basically identical. They kill their buff at the same time. Like Smithy is skipping wolves. And maybe going straight for red to make sure he doesn't get double buffed. Yep. You'll probably look to go for maybe a skeleton. Oh, wow. Speaking of bottom really lane, bottom Jin. Lane. Oh no. Uh, oh no. No. We're that... gonna have to see that again, but that oh, could be the tilter. They were so close to getting that first blood. You think? I mean, I respect that. At least they're trying to make the play. They're like, you know what? We're not gonna just sit here and get pushed in and have zero okay, priority. Dark Dark clean this up, though. Four summoner spells this, are down. If he can clean it. This could be worth it. Yeah, this is smart. He's got the path to yeah. do it. Afro's dead. Yeah. This could be good. Yeah, super dead. Okay. No, not no, that bad. The wave's pushing back at least, so yeah. it's really not the end of the world here. Hmm. This is pretty great. I think X Smithy could get in there and maybe get the wolf camp. Or he's, he's gonna, gonna get he's mid. gonna get summoners here. Get at least a flash. If Phoenix plays it well, he can probably oh. get away with me. Oh, okay. Never mind. I think that's about the outcome you'd have. Yeah. I like the fact that Xmithy didn't use his flash on the gank, but Dardock really trying to make a repeat gank here. No, uh, that's that's Never. just a waste here, because now he's going to fall behind, and it just gives Xmithy mm -hmm. so much time to just say, hey, I know where you are. I know that you probably have to base here or, or jungle extremely low. I can just take over the top side. Yeah. Just because it was so epic, we're going to watch this again. It's what set up the jungle gank. Yeah, they just get two people tagged with the Braum passive. A good exhaust, though, and good The deal. W flat Ooh. from Jin. Yeah, then the flash from Stixie to get the final kit. But then, honestly, COD stuck around. Dardoch had a versatile enough path that he was able to go and gank bottom. And He's now that bail. See, just because he went for that ridiculous try to get that extra gank in the top side, he oh, lost he's doubles. He's most likely going to lose the Raptors as they come back up. It's looking can easily just go to... Uh, oh, and he smited them just that vision of the Bard. So like Smithy can just head back to the Raptors, and now, oh, Dardoch is so far behind. Mm -hmm. This is just why, t why jungling is such a team effort. 
Yeah, well, it's a team effort because Afro moves counter juggling him, but also because Dardock was just greedy in the bottom. Yeah, he could so prevent it all. This you see happen. a mistake and immediately you punish as a team because this would have been identical to what last game, as you mentioned, the pathing doesn't allow for the Raptor camp to be counter jungled immediately. But because they see that, they punish right away, and now Smithy pulls away with two extra camps. Man, like Smithy's still full health too. Dardock is going back to a classic Rek'Sai build as well. He did this a lot earlier on in the year with Mercury Treads first. So then now, now we've seen three different Rek'Sai starts. We've seen the Team Outrush, the first game from Dardock. Game two from Xmithy we saw an early Sightstone. And here from Dardock we see Mercury Treads. What does the Mercury Treads specifically bring? I think it's for ganking. Like it, it lets you gank lanes that have a lot of CC as the Bard and the Gragas. So that you can, Gragas can't really do anything to you when you have that Merc Treads since the CC and Magic Resist are quite useful and the mobility lets you move across the map and get those ganks going. So while you could go with the Chilling Smite and make sure that you get there in in a, a more effective pattern, or you get, your ganks are more effective, with the Merc Treads you are a little bit safer to get caught out and you can move across the map faster if you want to cross multiple lanes. I personally don't like the Merc Oh, I hate treads. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like it, it at just all. Feels, it, yeah. it feels bad. I mean, I'm trying to explain. Yeah, it. <laughs> you're, you're explaining what it's about, yeah. and then, then yeah. you can dump on yeah. it right yeah. after that. Just <laughs> say so don't uh, like I it. I mean, I understand the, the appeal of it. You're obviously a lot faster. You have movement speed. You can get ganks off. Oh, you just might. Please. Oh, no. Dardock is getting wrecked right yeah. now. Yeah, he walked it's, it's all the way good. through the top side of his jungle when he probably should have guessed that he was getting counter jungle, just based on where Afrin was. So, yeah. like, the only way he passed through that is to make sure the small camps aren't up, but he wasted so much time. Yeah, I think the thing about the, the Merc Treads that, that I personally don't like is efficiency-wise, it just feels bad. Uh, it doesn't help you clear. Yeah, it doesn't help you clear, whereas Chilling oh, Smite... Oh, dead. Oh, oh, nice angle from Smithy. I like Smithy. it. I like it. Oh, he missed it. No, you oh, gotta good to get him! Oh dear. Oh, almost. But um, when you buy Chilling Smite, obviously that gives you both parts of the jungle component, and that helps you clear, but... You're gonna gank him now. At least this, he this gets is what, him. This is what needs to happen when you yeah. go beside him. Seriously, a couple things just happened. Next, Smithy failed this gank in the top lane, which we're gonna see again. And this one, I don't think we need to replay because Dardock was just a pretty clean gank into the bottom side onto his flashless Ezreal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, technically, I would really like to see a dragon here. Like, I, I, you want to convert it right now? I, I would convert as soon as possible. Like a turret, a dragon, something like that. You know exactly where everyone is. Um, oh wait, that's stunned. That would have been the yeah. kill. Yeah, there's been a couple where Darshan's super close. But then watch this. We love the angle that Xmithy did with the body slam. I love how it knocks him a little bit back. Mm -hmm. But then they just didn't have the damage, and he he actually walked into turret before he had to. Yeah. yeah. And that made him take the last shot. Well, the, the cue from Darshan missed, so it's a, little, it's a bit of a miss, but I really like the idea behind it. Yeah, then this gank, he still had his flash, and then he was able to stun him with See, really clutch. It, it, it just speaks to how little faith they have in Fabi, because you could have easily put this much attention into the bottom lane with Fabi down there, and probably seen even better results with Ash and Brahma, as you can you have so much lockdown. But now that it's Jint, immediately you just say, oh, let's help this man out. And, it's been working great. He's got his 10 CS up, BF sort of pickaxe. And a lot of that does kind of fall back to jungler choice. The first two games, Dardock wasn't thinking about bottom lane. And in neither of those games did Fabi give up first blood in a 2v2. But Jint gives up first blood in 2v2, and suddenly he's now ahead of Stixie and Gold because yeah. Dardock's been camping for him. The pity gank? No. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. I hope it's not a pity gank. <laughs> Okay, so they actually swapped Jint up oh, early. They're doing the exact same play CLG did, but without the wave preparation. CLG's tweaking it, though. So, Dardock came up, Xmithy came to cover, but they hold. kept Ezreal bottom. It's a three-man hold, yeah. I mean, this is good for CLG. They're getting damage on the bot turret. Um, it just makes no sense why you would move Jint to the top side when you have the Ash error right now. Just keep punishing bottom lane. Don't move the Ash around the map. Especially pre-6 for Bard. I can understand that because they could have forced, but I really do feel like they were trying to just mimic CLG. Yeah. They said, CLG's done great with this. Once they have an advantage bottom lane, they send him top and there's nothing you can do. CLG actually knows that there is exactly something you can do, and I loved the way X Smithy was way ahead of that game, and Darshan was very willing to use ultimates to secure waves. So on this recall here, also, this is like the best thing in the world. When a laner helps you clear the camp, yeah. it's like, dude, I'm going to give you a skin after this game <laughs> yeah. because of this. Thank you. It's like you... You love me? Or like when the support <laughs> Brahm sends a cue on your cam, you're like, <gasps> really? I stunned? <laughs> yeah. I was... Like obligated to type thank you in the chat. TY, TY. 
It's yeah. worse though when he sticks around longer and then steals your camp away from you. Yeah. All the the yeah, yeah, that's like, like time for Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Didn't think the poison would take it. So uh, he he went with the Tiamat for Dardoch and then Ixmithy changed his plan up, which I don't like this at all. Why you would change your game plan that has been working so well for two games and then you just say, all right, switch it up. He could have just gone with the trackers, keep eyes on Dardoch and you know what's going on in the map, but he, but he had gone with the, mm -hmm. the refillable. And now when, on his second recall, he's actually able to pick it up. Yeah, so if we toggle the vision, I want to see what it's at right now for COG specifically and then compare it to Team Liquid because he's gone for LA trackers. So the vision, they don't have any deep vision to set up plays with, and they really only have a few uh, wards in the river. Dardoch also hasn't gone for vision though, so if we toggle it to Team Liquid, yeah, they're playing pretty blind too. It's pretty much just the scuttle crab. So side. one thing I want to point out here is that because CLG has that ward on the dragon side, to me that tells me that they're not looking to make a whole lot happen in the bottom side. They're kind of conceding and saying, we're not really interested in getting any fights around here. Maybe X Smith is going to be playing to the top or middle side of the map. And we are we understand that our weakness is in bottom lane. We don't want to involve ourselves fully with this. And just as that, he's going to the top side. Yeah. They're not colliding against each other. Notice how they actually swap back because COG was able to hold that so quickly. Mm -hmm. Didn't seem like Jint lost out on all that well, much. Uh, he didn't lose out he, on he much. He had a 10 CS yeah. lead. He had like 10, 15 CS and now it became zero. Oh, Matt. Falling from base. If both would have communicated, if Jint and Matt flashed, they can get the kill, but you know that lack of synergy doesn't net that. Some, such a commitment for any kills. The attention is still so massive from Team Liquid, yeah, though. Dardoch team. has been camping the bottom side. So much so, he's actually behind on CS from X Smithy. Yep. I think also this this matchup has a lot um, less counterplay from CLG. In the other iterations that we've seen, CLG's had an Ash, had a Jin, which is really karma. yeah, which is really good at returning fire. Whereas Ezreal, you pretty much know what he's doing. He's sitting down there, he's trying to farm his Muramana, and then eventually he'll he'll hit his 20 minute power spike and be strong. Yeah. So as a jungler, does that make you more willing to gank that lane just because it can't go as poorly if it goes wrong? Yeah, I'd say it definitely makes you more willing, especially because Ezreal you're not as afraid of as um, some other champions. Oh, That's what? way too aggressive from Huey. I guess what, it's going to work. Oh. He should, he should be moving his cloud. Damn. Okay, calculate. Got him. Well, that's a good reactive play from CLG. They saw Phoenix roam, but um, Smithy just held that off as three, and then they made the aggressive dive play. Hoopy takes over the jungle roll, puts yep. the pressure on the wave crash. <laughs> yeah. that's, like, that's a great move. When you yeah. tag out, you tag out your, your teammates like, hey, I can't do this right now, but can you put pressure on the other side of the map? And while it looks like maybe even Hoopy made that play, ultimately that could easily be the shot caller of the team saying, hey, we have Xmithy down here, and maybe Xmithy's the one calling it. Can you make a play on the top side? This could be pressured really easily. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that's one thing that COG has definitely been better than Team Liquid in, is having the team work around where Xmithy goes. They're almost always covering for him or applying pressure where they want to. Oh, oh, shifted into that. oh that's... And Dardoch is still here. He's got Flash. Maybe they try and get two? I think, I think he wants two, yeah. They, they have the they have TMA. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Jinx, man. it's kind <laughs> of disappointing from CLG's game plan, not really recognizing that you, you know that you're getting camped in the bottom and you know that Dardoch is sitting down here. I mean, they even talked about it in their kind of trash talk within themselves that Liquid loves to, loved to camp bottom lane when they had Piglet and Dardoch clearly showing him his old self and just sitting on the duel lane and CLG doesn't respond well at all. And what's interesting is we haven't gotten to hear it yet, but there was a soundbite of Aphromu talking about how against Team Liquid, you don't have to worry about bottom lane because Dardoch just kind of ignores them. Which was true in the first two games, and it's very much the way COG was playing. Very free sending three man ganks here, but definitely kind of changing the script here with the way Dardoch is playing the game. He's got a much different style. It's, it's obviously kind of a desperate style with how much he's ganking and how much he's just kind of trying to make everything work, but it has worked to the tune of two kills and two assists, and it gives TL a chance to extend the series. It, it, you gotta switch it up. You've lost yeah. two games in a row, especially in the lane phase. It's a good idea to try something new. So, now with a roughly 2,000 gold disadvantage, when you're in the game, you can't tell, but CLG will know that they're a little bit behind, and X Smithy knows that his bottom lane is getting heavily focused. What do you think X Smithy should be doing, Dom, as the Gragas right here, to try and help his bottom lane or to go somewhere else? I think, I think he just needs to establish better vision control. They've had this pink in in this lane brush pretty much forever. I think Darshan gets a solo kill here. Oh, mm. 
I think he could have just waited that out and crashed yeah. the wave and you win yeah. that match because he doesn't have ultimate on the rail. You're proccing your Mega Nara. That should not get a kill. That's way too much HP. Yep. Yeah, it does even wait for it. Yeah, but I definitely think better vision control is pretty much the, the key to this. Yeah, speaking of which, another arrow flies out of Fog of War. Oh, Jin's flashed into that, by the way. Why does it matter? This doesn't matter at all. Operation Camp Bot Lane. It was yeah. Jin the answer all along. <laughs> I mean, he's gotten one place in every single yep. gank, and that's some of the results yep. for him, so why not keep going for it? If CLG refuses to adapt to make something happen, then mm -hmm. good for TL. Yep. I mean, Smithy just needs to be doing something. He can be helping Darshan dive top, or he can be countering these plays, but he's, he's pretty much just farming the jungle right now while his lanes get camped. And he's not is... even up in CS at this point. Yep. Yeah, and this is just a completely different player answer. for Dardock. Like, he hasn't been dictated to at all this game. So he's been able to go pretty much where he wants. So they fly in, the Bard ult, the Braum ult comes in through the Bard ult, which helps Dardock get in, but he's super strong. Finished his Cinderhawk at this point, still got Tiamat, and yeah, I kind of really want to start tracking Dardock's decisions here, because this is more the Dardock that we saw a lot in the regular season, where he's doing exactly what he wants, and the other jungler isn't able to dictate to him. What? Well, I mean, like Smithy, just such an uncharacteristic game from what we saw in the first two. You'd expect him to be able to, to set the pace or at least be trying to help a laner. Most of his plays are by him, are with a laner as opposed to, oh, it's another one. I think part of it is also that he doesn't have the tools to work with. I mean, before he was playing with a Jin in the bot lane and Ash in the bot lane, things that are going to set him up. But now he has pretty much only a Nar that, that's a gankable lane early. Oh, what? Yeah, I mean, I still think you can gank it. Nara's practically soloing out Aurelia for, yeah. before the Trinity. Mm -hmm. This looks like more of a TL game. Absolutely. They're they're really aggressive. That's 10 kills in 16 minutes. Yep. Keeping the pressure up with Dardoch. And yeah, I agree with you that x Smithy hasn't been able to match, but talk about a bit more about the tools that TL has had and, like, was this kind of a draft phase or is it just the few ganks the started attention. working It's early? the attention. It's being able to find that opportunity early. You saw him go for that level three gank right away as opposed to going for four camps or whatnot, and this is going to be another kill. That bites him to come down. They, they need to, to start adapting to it. They're kind of playing too loose here where they're just assuming, oh, we can just push our lanes and eventually we'll scale. They actually have to be more conscious and get back to their own team style. This looks more like a solo queue game, whereas before they were grouping early. They're controlling vision as a team. Now they're kind of just letting the game come to them instead of just, uh, in, instead of just being proactive, doing things together, grouping X Smithy with Aphromoo getting vision together. Uh, they're, they're essentially just just letting TL get everything they want right and now. I can't help but attribute this a big part of it to the vision control change that TL made. Now that Dardock went for the earlier tracker's knife, we saw the earlier sweeping lens, and now if you see the vision control that he's being able to put in the top side map when they made that play for the tier one top side, it's fully littered. You can see everything going on with Phoenix in the mid lane. You have nothing escaping you in that top side. And if they can keep up that vision control when they keep making plays around the map, anything that is regarding an arrow or a tunnel play from TL is going to be able to be net kills. Dardock doesn't even have to be involved in that, and they get another summoner spell out of Vision. Can you toggle the Vision to just show TL what they can see? Because this is allowing Dardock to make a lot of decisions. The fact that he has that entire quadrant of the jungle cleared out here. And this should net them a Herald here. If you get that Herald onto Lorlo, we could be able to see an even bigger sway in the matchup than we saw in the previous game, where he was able to practically 1v2 Darshan and Ephra. He's trying to give it away. Who wants it? Just hit it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it's the Herald control right now. They can see Darsha on the bottom lane, and Dardock is, like we said, doing whatever he wants. I can't really see what CLG is gonna do besides for just farming for late game. Kind of seems reminiscent of that that other game they played during the season where they ended up having this massive late game fight after they were, they were getting dictated to the whole game. Mm -hmm. Same type of team. You have you have the the Gragas and the Victor. Maybe we see another another situation where you just rely on who he trying to carry this game hyper late. And they do have that aspect when it comes down to the team fight. As long as they can get rid of Phoenix with another cask, like we saw 
way back then in that game, then they should be able to actually win flat on the team fight. But I do expect TL to make moves for Baron really quickly in this game, because if they transition this advantage to the Mountain Drake, that means that that Baron play at 20, 25 minutes is gonna be wide open for them. And as long as they press the matter and say, hey, fight us when your edge is not strong, then they should be able to win these fights and close out rather quickly with a, the snowballed comp. Yeah, and I guess the other tweak that would come in here as the junglers is knowing that you are playing against Jin, who's kind of on stage for the first time. He obviously started fantastically, but does that mean Smithy should be looking specifically hard for an Ash pick, or does he need to play it really conservatively because they're so far behind? I think you don't let that play into your mindset at all. You just play it like you would any other player. Um, I think at this point, he's feeling pretty comfortable. I don't think he's gonna make a ridiculously stupid mistake. Yeah. Um, you just have to, to just let the game come to you. Um, at this point, like you've already obviously let the game be dictated to you for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you're gonna have to play reactively to some degree. Uh, when they ward your jungle, you're gonna need to de-ward it. Um, you're gonna need to like control Baron Vision with, with um, Ezreal ults. Uh, blue trinkets, things like that. You have to play semi-defensively and turtle until you hit item power spikes when you can actually fight. Mm-hmm. Not sure our misses. They have Iceborne completed on Stix A. Uh, let's talk about the jungle builds a little bit. We have Randwins coming in for X Smithy and a Hydra, Titanic Hydra for Dardoch. And I really don't like the decision to go for the arrow on that Z. Honestly, it's quite hard to maybe go for the fall pick. There is still that cast. There is still the Bard ultimate from after. But more importantly, that dragon's coming out in 30 seconds. This is the objective that Team Liquid needs to recognize. That specifically the junglers need to recognize. I think that junglers should be in charge of all the jungle objectives. And that Dardoch should be saying, like, look, our priority is making sure that we get the dragon. If you can get a pick around the dragon, mm -hmm. we're going to be able to win the fight. Because if they go for that pick and they blow summoners for that, that means that when it comes down to that dragon fight, there's no Ash Arrow, and there's not going to be the chance to actually get a better fight with your summoners down. And how much does Jardok have to accelerate the pace here? They're 4,000 gold up? The game's been working very well, or can they just kind of let the game come to them? I think you just do Dragon Bear. Yeah. You, you, you just go for, for the objectives that, that are easy to get. You don't want to uh, overforce here, because that's exactly when CLG will be able to turn around. CLG still has a bunch of CC, and if you're running directly into CLG's comp, uh, you will be in a situation where you're going to be hit by things and you will be uh, in a situation where you're going to lose the fight. So uh, they just have to be be smart, take Mountain Drake, provide vision, and if they play a very controlled game from this point, it should be a fairly easy victory. Now Dragon Baron is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. COG trying to push up the other side. They do see Jint on the bottom side of the map with the teleport up on Darshan, so maybe x maybe looks for something. The wave clear from Lolo. Well, now, now TL and Dardoch have to, as he's doing right now, clear the vision on the red side and then enable themselves to put the vision in the CLG red side themselves so that they can easily force the matter around Baron. Because Cassiopeia with Mountain Drake, this is a very fast Baron that they can do. Ash has a lot of DPS and that single big target as well, especially with a big fed Titanic Hydra Rex that as we see right now. Mm -hmm. Just come at him from every single oh, angle. Damage. I mean, that's that's definitely a situation where you flash early. There's no reason. I mean, you to... have ghost flash. Yeah, you have ghost flash. I don't think that you... if the arrow misses, I don't think you should be dying to that. It just seems like they're they stopped caring as much as they were in the earlier games. Yep. They don't seem as crisp. That's for sure. It's a soggy cereal. <laughs> What's your? Some cereals can be good. Like uh... soggy? No thanks. What? What soggy? Sucks. I mean, this CLG compared to how they were, you know, out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. It's the, it's the bottom tier here right now. Yeah. yeah. That's also the Titanic Hydra burst you got to see from Dardoch. And, I mean, TL's getting the, the Dragon Lottery right here. The next one's Inferno. This lead is big enough for them to guarantee themselves pretty much every upcoming Dragon. And Cassiopeia and Astrolit are just so great with this, and the Titanic Hydra build is only going to do even more d DPS. Transition into the Baron, you already have the Herald on the Lorlo, so I think that this has been a pretty good game from Dardoch. While the game plan was rather mm -hmm. linear, it worked perfectly. Yeah, yeah it, like, I, like, the early game was still pretty desperate from Dardoch when he rushed the Mercury Treads, had the first gank, greed afterwards cost him a lot of CS. The fact that he's bounced back to me has been pretty impressive. We're gonna watch this kill one more time. Start with the whiff dash. Yeah. Right there, you can flash, right yeah, here. Flash. Um, but he decides to let Dardoch kill him, and that's about it. Yep. If you flash, Dardoch can flash, and would you take, 
Would you rather take that trade? I, I would. I would just ghost flash. Like I would yeah, ghost I immediately. Ghost flash. I, I would just ghost immediately as soon uh, as soon as you can, and then flash, and then most likely you'll be out of the flash knockup range at that point. So um, definitely think it's worth burning summoners there. Uh, I, I think in general right now, if you're if you're CLG, you you have to wait for three item power spikes on both your carries. Like, there's no way that Victor is able to kill the whole team with just a Rylize and um, a hex core that's upgraded three times. He needs at least a void on top of that, and uh, you definitely need at least a Borg for uh, Ezreal to be able to cut through the Relia and specifically the Rek'Sai. Yeah, and that makes it really difficult for CLG right now, just because the Drakes being Infernal Mountain. Baron being up, being against the Cassiopeia. The Vision's getting crushed by the double sweepers right now that Team Liquid has. Mm -hmm. I'd say Team Liquid might... How many pink wars do they have on the map? They might want a little more from the pink ward department. Well, I think it's time for Dardoch to sell his refillable potion. This is no longer a needed item for him. He absolutely does not need to sustain. The creeps give him so much HP as he's capped the strength of the ages. And you just need more pink wards. So while it might look like a a very minimal decision. The actual importance of having pink wards in this stage of the game where you're ahead and you have to pressure the game before CLG spikes is monumental. Yep. Agree. Maybe we're in for a longer series. Team Liquid looking pretty good here. I mean, something that you have to credit CLG for, though, is they've been down roughly 4K, 4 to 5K for the last 10 minutes. Being able to stall like that is actually uh, pretty impressive. TL has been able to get uh, like a Mountain Drake, they'll probably get this Infernal as well, but um, at the end of the day, CLG needs to stall for items, and that's what they're being allowed to do. Yeah, Smithy might get caught trying to clear mm -hmm. wards here. You can see they saw him. You think the Phoenix stunned right there that would have hit because Smithy was facing it? It was a really close call. Smithy's been, all of CLG's been pretty good about dodging Cassiopeia. This is real interesting. This is good for CLG. Yep. Just any time that a fight happens and nothing gets yeah, gained, it just, just stalls the game out <laughs> further. And this is not good, the fact that Darshan is able to bully. I think it just has to do with the red buff. Hopefully, because there is that, I don't know if he is, the level advantage on Darshan. Yeah. I mean, he's also built completely for the split push. Randwin's Ninja Tabi plus the Frozen Mallet, not really yeah. respecting Phoenix's damage at all. But in the stall sense, that's really all they want to do to stall. Look at this though, teleport coming in for low. Let's watch out Dardock. Right, Who's that mana too? Yeah, this, is good for, this could be better for TL once they win this fight. Dark, who's dead? Good exhaust though. Someone's dead for sure, if it was not Hui. Oh geez. Uh, I, I, I like that from, from, from Six I mean, trying to protect his team, but then the flash from Phoenix. They're just trusting each other right here. Oh, it's Smith, yeah. Oh. Flash. No flash. What is that? Slam two seconds. Greedy. Used to get over no, the wall. That was so greedy going for that. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I, I I don't understand how Braum was able to completely zone Nar that entire fight. I feel like Darshan should have been able to collapse a lot quicker than that. And this should be the Baron that TL needed. Yeah, it goes down so fast too. He had to base. Darshan's not mega. Yeah, this is Baron. That, that single decision from McSmithy could have single-handedly cost that game, because it looked like, it, I mean, TL is not really able to find the best 5v5 fight if the arrow's not there, and the fact that McSmithy donates himself nets that Baron, so really awful choice to body slam there. The team was clearly out. They're trying to turn something here, though, really after the attack. Punished here. Potentially a lot of damage. Maybe Cassie will hit, though. No flash. It's a Should very quick flash right there. For, oh. As far as jungles go, I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, Zip has been going up. Here comes Dardoch as well. Smart of the Rek'Sai side of back in the long fight to come back to full health. Wow. He's very low. I think that was grasp of them, of them dying on Braum that was able to secure that kill. And just so people know, you're not here for the play-by-play. -play. You're here for the jungle yeah. analysis on what Dardock and Smithy should be doing. We're right in the middle of the screen here. Love the fact that Dardock came into the back of that fight and really a long series of events, whereas Dardock still consistently coming out ahead on this game. But I think it's because he took a lot of risks that ended up working. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to, you have to understand as CLG that once he comes once, once he comes twice, 
you have to, to, to do something different. There has oh. to be some um, level of prediction of what I he's going to do next. I think he's going to take this. He can just solo. Yeah, he, you yeah. got ran doing. Oh, what? Uh, he should be dead. He, should just, he doesn't know fight. where the team is. He, I mean. Oh, they're teaming behind. All right, this, this, this has to be good. A little bit uncoordinated, but here they go. Am I die? Nice. Let's see what Jin can do. At least it's a... Oh my it's goodness. A fire Dragon for TL. Second one. But I mean, that's just awful for Matt trying to say, you know, you can't correct a mistake with another one. Mm -hmm. When someone is out of position, you, you let him die and then you make something else happen. Yeah, watch the Baron one more time and basically a really long chase afterwards. x is dead, so Dardock tries to path out of the Baron pit. Interesting how he path out towards COG instead of just bailing right over the top. Mm -hmm. I think it was mainly to protect his team. Mm -hmm. Lorlo had to exit that way and he was much lower life than Dardock, so. Yeah, Dardock then tries to go for Afro. I really like the decision Punish. from Afro to actually pop that sweeper as he's going in on the flank to make sure that, okay, am I being spotted? Do I play this flank as if they see me or as if they don't? Jin seems very trigger happy with the summoner spells, which isn't too surprising. Coming in, nice arrow as well right there. Yeah, I mean, I think the last game they were having problems with, with pretty much the opposite of Fabi dying with the summoners up consistently. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was something that they talked about. Um, you get a bipolar point. effect. You get a guy that uses it too much, a guy that doesn't use yeah. it. I'd rather take the one that uses it. Yeah, I'd rather. <laughs> I mean, they have a cooldown for a reason. It's not like they never come back yeah. up. <laughs> a dead man's play. Oh, I hate this. Dead man's play when you're behind those dragons. I mean... Mm. I don't, I just don't see the point of it. Maybe you're hitting an auto, chances are you're dying. I'd much rather have like the GA or maybe a Visage or something like that. I yeah, still going low on CDR in his Gragas build, even when they're behind this time. That is the choice that Smithy is making. And this is actually a familiar situation for COG, so to speak, against Team Liquid. Uh, towards the end of the regular season match, X Smithy had a massively ul massive ultimate in an Elder Drake fight 35 minutes in and was able to turn it. I think that means Dardock will be a little bit more careful about the fights he's taking. Well, the GA from him and Lula should make him pretty good diving buddies, even though CLG does have the pen, the pen I'm completed in victory with that Void Staff, but just GA is, is so powerful here that he can throw caution to the wind almost, and there he goes. One thing that CLG is great at is stalling out games. Um, they don't, they're exactly the opposite of TL. They don't get over aggressive, they don't get trigger happy. They normally just wait and defend as best they can and go for one optimal fight in which they all end, which is normally like the game decider. So, definitely a lot of respect for them for holding on for the last uh, 15 minutes when they were severely behind in the early game. Yeah, it has been extended a little bit by TL. And the split push is something that we're going to try and get right here. That's why they go. This is Phoenix has flash and ghost. This is risky for CLG. I don't think they should. This, this is not the fight they want to take. This is like... really uncharacteristic. Yeah, not to mention Lorlo sold on the other side, so Dardock is willing to go in with his GA. But this is over aggressive. Cool. And the last oh. thing you want to do is go for. Yeah, that's a that's a Phoenix. That could solid. potentially be game. That, that's. If I they get the minions, they could end. Thirty. Thirty. Close. Mm. Nope. I think they the, the, might just get in here. Yeah, they can get in here for sure. 25 on the major wave player. I think that they go for it we here. 25 on Darshan. So here's that question we had last game. Solo queue game, scrim, do you try? Well, this, this, there's no, this is, there's no this other is objective. 20 seconds. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Ash pushes rather fast. Yeah. Wow, great job by Team Liquid. Pretty good recovery again. Yeah, especially Dardock 608. How the last pick, Rek'Sai. Comes in big when he has the fifth pick in the draft. And we're gonna get to see game four. That's and finally smiles on their face. That's great. Compare the body language that we saw out of Team Liquid yeah. after you did it. After this game. Good job, gents. When really it was compare the immense camping that Dardock yeah. did to the bottom side the of the team map. Team effort that yeah. they made in setting up the play, like, hey, objectives first, then get the win, as opposed to Let's react to what CLG is doing. Yeah, we've literally seen 
Rek'Sai versus Gragas and Gragas versus Rek'Sai and Rek'Sai versus Gragas. I think it's going to change. Do you think they should ban it at all? Like, Dark has such a big I don't think it's really dictating like the games too much, to be honest. It seems more of the actual play style as opposed to the picks mm -hmm. themselves. All right, then the question will be, the play style we saw in this game seemed a lot more frantic from Dardock, a lot more aggressive. How would X-Smithy try and counter that next game so that they don't push I mean, the side I, th I thought they did such a wonderful job of countering it. They just stopped doing it. Yeah, I, I thought that this game seemed like they let their mentality slip a little bit. Maybe the, the change of Jinth for Fabi looked a little bit desperate to mm -hmm. CLG, and they might have not taken it um, with as much focus or seriousness as they probably should have, but I think that they probably will correct that going into the, to the next game. Um, especially even at the end, they were doing uncharacteristic things. CLG is not the type of team that's going to engage outside of a turret when they're 5k or 10k behind and, and lose the game off that. So um, I definitely think that going into the next game, they'll view it as, okay, we got that out of our system. Let's go back to, to what we do. Um, everything clean, high priority on finding where Dardock is and just playing the game out standard. Yeah, and I want to see Dardock, or sorry, X Smithy get back to having that punishing duo lane where they're able to push, because that's really where the game fell apart, and that's where X Smithy had been camping for the first. And the build changed completely. We saw him with the early wards to keep eyes on Dardock, and mm -hmm. he could have done so much work, especially against that Merc Treads early on, and that just never came around. They came around at like the nine, five, nine, ten minute mark where you actually started to keep eyes on him, but by that point, it was already too late, and he already got like three kills in the bottom lane. Yeah, definitely looking forward to see how X Smithy reacts to Dardock's new found friends in the bottom lane. Uh, we have some ongoing analysis at the desk, though, so we're going to send it there right now. Lane and yo, Jint and all that. This was Matt's best game of the entire season. Yeah. Because he was landing all of his Braum cues, really good ultimates this entire series. And I also think that his tagging and his target selection was supreme here. I think that this is the best game. This is almost like, hey, Matt woke up from a coma from Spring yeah. Split. And now he's back. Well, and that was part of what we were saying. There, there is something to subbing a new player in simply to change that dynamic and the mentality of the team, right? It's not working with the current roster. We switch somebody out, and that can sometimes just bring the morale up. Here they are now, of course, discussing what they're going to do for Game 4 because they still have their work cut out for them having to win two more off the back end of this one if they want to uh, move into the semifinals. But, you know, you mentioned it. It was a step up from the whole team around Jint. And in particular, we saw a ton of focus into the bot lane from Dardock. So, you know, paired with better execution from Matt individually, the attention that was received in the bot lane from Dardock. We, I mean, the, the number of visits, just the sheer number of visits that he threw into the bot lane was absolutely nuts. And one thing I want to say is this, that CLG took Ezreal for some reason. I really don't get it because they played Jin in game one versus the Ash, and then you see at that level two basically all in that they just get bullied out super hard, and even though there's a misplay from uh, Jin that he like goes in and dies. Ultimately, that's kind of what set up all those shenanigans to happen because then Dardock just kept coming down with all those summoners blown. You think if they just had uh, the gin, something they're more comfortable with, yeah. that wouldn't have happened because this <laughs> this is what happens instead. It's just that once uh, that gin kill went down, he gets a free kill on Aphromoo. This one was pretty free because there was no wards. And then he just kept coming down over and over and over. And it's just so brutal to play against this because CLG was clearly putting a lot of focus on the top he, side. He gives it over too. Yep. I'm, I'm just like, what world are we living in? Yeah, Dardoch Dardoch just gave over yeah. a kill <laughs> to the AD carry. That's I mean, like, Dardock still got his. He ended up like, what, six, He was like, five, yeah, was like, like six, zero, and five at one point. So, you know, he definitely had, as you mentioned, a fantastic game for himself. But it, yeah, it's just something that, that we don't necessarily see from him in the past. But here we go. Jinth also with some pretty sweet accuracy on his arrow. Yeah, and, and Stixay doesn't dodge that one. And honestly, I feel like the pressure of just being ganked over and over and over again, and the fact that they're going to pull the trigger every time, was getting to this bottom lane here. I feel like they were cracking a little bit. And you mentally broke them a bit as well, because I mean, they got first blood off of a dive that was really aggressive. And I also think that TL, that was actually a really good play from them. Mm. Because if they know they're going to get Dardock attention, have your lanes trade very heavily, get those flashes, get every summoner spell out of them. I don't care if you die, it's an Ezreal. He backs and comes back with tier. He's not coming back with like serrated Dirk or anything. And then you get your ganks. Then there's no flashes, big advantage. It, it definitely seemed like a plan coming into the game to have Dardock give a lot of attention to that bot side because you're used to him snowballing the Aurelian R matchup or something right. and just having that much attention to help out the rookie in this first game to know that he's kind of going to get babysat a little bit was huge. Well, and then huge. at the same time, the adjustment by the solo laners of Team Liquid, knowing they're not going to get that attention from Dardock, being able to absorb ganks. We saw Smithy opting to make appearances in both the top and the mid lane as opposed to the bottom lane, and those solo laners were more or less able to absorb the majority of the pressure supplied by Smithy, which made that 
uh, goal differential made that pressure game all that much more uh, drastic. And there was a critical mistake by Darshan when he was kind of in the lead that was given to him by Smithy where he gave that kill up under the turret. That uh, was kind of a breaking point where the Nar Aurelia matchup kind of isn't in Aurelia's favor for the early part. And then if Nar starts getting ahead, he gets too much of an HP pool. But giving that kill up, I think, gave Lorlo the ability to take that matchup back over. Now, of course, we do have to consider what CLG's thinking, how they're dealing with the, you know, the mental aspects of this. I know that, you know, we look at this roster and say, well, here's the thing. They've been to the finals the last two splits. They're no, you know, uh, they're, they're not new to the feeling of being down a game or two in a best of five <laughs> or even being down against Team Liquid, as we've mentioned. They've, mm. they've, come, they've had multiple comebacks against this squad in particular, and they still have a game advantage to work with here in this best of five. I do want to push us forward, though, to our final replay, the game-ending fight. This is Team Liquid operating with a gold lead, and they do definitely look a lot more comfortable here in the late game having that gold lead. I mean, yeah, you're seeing the bot side play right now, but right on the other side of the map, Lorlo's about to turn around a kill for himself. I don't like CLG's decision to really pick a fight here 4v4 when they're down so much gold. It's it's not like it was even a clean engage, and it's just so easily turned back around with Dardock kind of going in all ham, and then Phoenix is going to get a really nice ultimate here onto Huhi, which sets him up for the kill while Six is kiting away, and then the trade. Yep. The, the, whole, the whole thing was just... Well played by Team Liquid. It was. I was surprised that with no inhib turrets down, CLG felt so pressured. That's what I was going to go. mention yeah. was the fact that CLG Baron Buff had fallen off of Team Liquid. CLG still had all their inhib turrets intact. Probably could have stalled out the game a little bit longer and played for a little bit more of that Ezreal five six item power spike as opposed to the three item power spike that they were playing with at the time. Uh, you know, looking forward now, Team Liquid has selected red side for game four. So once again, staying in the same position they're in, probably wouldn't expect them to uh, switch up their pick ban strategy so much here in this game four. But I guess the question is, how does CLG adjust to the fact that Dardock in particular really changed his play style here in game four or game three rather? Uh, for me, the thing that actually concerned me a little bit was that TL tried to do that swap that CLG had been doing. Yeah. It just flubbed it horribly. <laughs> like, the Dark Sean ulted, Lorlo into the turret, he almost died. They got nothing off it. And I right. think when your macro game is so clearly behind, I think CLG just needs to chill out, realize that, like, we're still a better team. We just got rolled bottom because maybe we shouldn't have gone with the Ezreal. Or they just played well. You know, credit to TL for, for definitely having Dardock snowball it. But I think you just go back to what had been working, which is basically the same thing, and just win the next game. Yeah, and I mean, like, if you're playing Ezreal, you have at least a way to dodge the arrow and to dodge <laughs> Braum cues. If you're playing something like Jin, it just gets a little bit worse in that bottom lane. And I, I don't know anybody who would have been able to really operate under that much pressure from a jungler. Mm -hmm. Just, it was so much. Like, it was 13 minutes, and you'd already been there literally five times. Yeah, well, Jin's got one, but he needs two more to prote propel his team, rather, to a semifinal. Game four kicks off in just a few minutes, so stick around. The North American LCS quarterfinals continues right after this. It's a long road for Team Liquid as CLG eyes now firmly on the rematch versus TSM. Ignite is down, Afro might be the first blood here. Is Jith gonna try to make oh. his first kill, but he doesn't get it. Now Stixay gonna chase in. Matt, what? Oh, no, Disaster! One he's more order. Enough. He's gonna go in for it. He's big enough, and Lola gonna oh. stun him! Gets the outplay. Jason CLG! Oh my god, that Bard ultimate saves Lola, but the arrow is oh. Fails it for the snipe. Jith There's... from downtown! Oh, Gragas, 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 Gragas is dead. We can win, we can win. I killed Noah, I killed Noah! Yo, I can flash forward, I'm on 6 Run, run, Ezra, run, Ezra. I'm gonna come with the match. Yo, keep chasing, I'm coming from their base, okay? I have G, I have G. Keep going forward. TL is gonna win a game. And we've got a series on our hands now, boys. Team Liquid come back strong.